What's up, guys? It's Steven here from Cymatix, and we got Beats by Jay Black. What up? What up, man? How you feeling? Good. I'm, dude, I'm pumped. I was pumped since you got here because, dude, this dude is an absolute monster uh, at finger drumming. And it's, it's funny how we bumped into each other through Instagram, like just seeing the content you guys, you, you were putting out. Right. I mean, you guys are definitely well-known on the internet, so when I actually saw that you and Drew hit me up and the whole side Maddox, I like followed all you guys and I was like, yo, the movement that you guys is too unreal. So when you guys included me in the giveaway, yeah. <laughs> I'd answer real fast and, well, and it transpired to here now. Yeah, and then seeing you were from Atlanta, I was like, dude, let's link up and do some stuff, man. Uh, because for me personally, the thing that I think is cool is, I mean, dude, first off, like finger drumming for producers, it's like the, not only is it fun, obviously you can do a lot of interesting things, but also just like content wise, I mean, you're an animal, like putting out videos I appreciate that, all the time. So yeah, I'm really pumped. Key. So the main reason I'm excited about this beginner course is, is that, you know, me and Drew have actually wanted to get into finger drumming because it's an awesome thing to do alongside production. Um, and honestly, we didn't really know where to start, like looking for, through a couple of videos and stuff, but this dude's like at a completely different level. How, how many years have you been doing it? I would say safely about seven years. Seven years, yeah. yeah. And you guys are about to see how good he is. And then I just want to go in. I'm going to be asking him questions. And we're going to break down everything a beginner, a producer, even anybody needs to actually get started with finger drumming. Cool. All right. Um, sweet. So I think the first question that's like super important for a lot of producers to, to hear or a lot of people to hear is like, what do you need to get started? Is it Because like, I know this thing is pretty expensive in terms yeah, of equipment. Yeah, I mean, because this is dope. I mean, I, I have the MPC Live. And... The reason why I choose the MPC is because I was, that's one of the first beat pads I have. I've always stuck with the Kai, and it's always kind of had this swing and this feel that I've always been in my comfort zone in Element 2 because there's so many great machines out there. Like Ableton, I'm, I'm kind of peeking down Ableton's door because of so much stuff you can do at Ableton. I know you can. Uh, Fruity Loops is another great platform. I mean, even now, kids are making beats off their iPhone, so you can even get an app now and really do pretty much what I'm doing, finger drumming around the app. Um, I have an iPad, you can do it with an iPad and do most of the same stuff. So it, to really get started, now everybody has a smartphone nowadays. I mean, you can type in uh, finger drumming apps, beat making apps, and there's gonna be ones that look like little colors like this, and they have pretty dope beat packs and stuff like that. That'll be on some of these applications that even I help, <laughs> uh, help create myself, so. It's 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 you can start from a smartphone and work all the way up to a MPC or so they shouldn't be held back because they don't have like a exactly. fancy piece of equipment. Yeah, no, I think that's huge because right. a lot of people think they need to go buy four hundred dollar equipment and really could download your phone and start messing around. Exactly, again. and it's the same skill set, right? Right. Yeah. No, right. that's fucking awesome. Sweet. Um, so, like, like let's say somebody does get a pad or somebody does get a piece of equipment or something to start messing around. So, like, walk me through a little bit of like the first things like, you guys start thinking about and learning uh, when it comes to getting into finger drumming. So I, I think the main thing is, I can only say this because of where I am now, is mostly just building the feeling of it. So I look at it as almost like playing the piano, but in a way of playing the drums because it's a percussion side of things. So I, when I started, I actually started on the keyboard. So actually playing on the keyboard, finger drumming, is actually a little bit fun, more fun because I would say, uh, because it's like when you slam on the keys, it's more of like, like a kick drum, you know, like mm -hmm. the, you know, it, it kind of has that same feeling. So that's actually what I did. I actually used to split the keys up and have percussion on one side and the melodies on the other um, and, and do just different alternations like that before I kind of got to that. Just getting started, um, I would just say like, mostly just getting the feel for whatever piece of equipment you have because that really makes a difference. Like I, I love the MK3, but the pads are very sensitive. You can go like this to them and it will really set them off. So me, I kind of play a little heavier. So with that, I might do a lot of double beats with the MK just because the pads are a little sensitive. The MPC was always known for you to actually just, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it's hip hop, you know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah, yeah. You, You're taking it out on it. So um, I, I just always kind of felt comfortable with how these things were built because there's, there's different kind of ways. I mean, you got the... Uh, um, the push too, which is really nice too, but it's also very sensitive and the pads are very small. But some people get down on the push too too as well, just yeah. like the MK3 and just like, I don't know, the Fire. I mean, there's so many. Uh, I mean, what's that, the MK Mini everybody has now? Yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. Micro Mini that yeah. everybody has, yeah. People get dirty on that. Just have that in the laptop. And, and start to get really good with it. And get really good with it. Cool. So when it comes to like actually maybe creating some basic beats and stuff, like what do you suggest on getting started actually playing some stuff? And honestly, you should play some for the for everybody because I think people need to fucking 
here, like how you can take something fancy and then break it down to like, okay, let's get started, like start by learning this. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, so what I would do to mostly get started is I would always start with the loop. So I got everything here. I got my kick, my snare, my hi-hats. Um, also have my cymbals and all my crashes and extra stuff up there. So starting with the loop. Real soft loop, I want to make sure I can get the feel for it because the thing, the thing that's really cool about getting the, it's filling the loop is filling the different variations. I try to take out the fact of I'm trying to make sure I hit the, the, the snare, the, you know, it, it's just, all right, so what does this beat make me or what does this loop make me feel like? So it makes me feel like. Or. Add some stuff to it. So what I did there was I, I kind of got lost in even playing it because it, I just kind of find my own bounce with it. Um, the, the goal is, is, and like I was telling you the other day on the phone, is when I, when I make these beats, it's almost like when you're in a mall and you hear your song, you're at like JCPenney's or whatever, and you hear like a song on the radio, and you know how you just start hitting on the table and you start making a beat, you know, as you're on the counter. And you, it's funny how like you don't look at your hands, you're not looking at, all right, boom, smack, boom, boom, smack. It's like, nah, like the song is good. This is how I'm gonna add my spice to the song I hear on the intercom. And that's the exact same thing. So this is the intercom. And this is my counter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Awesome, man. So, I, think it's me. I, I instantly want to stop this and just go like, all right, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to go mess around. So how important is like where you place the sounds on this pad? Because I've seen that like Drew has a certain structure when he was kind of messing around with it. Right, Seems right. like you have a strategy. And I'm guessing you should be able to do it, but would it mess you up? Is there a certain like, you should you get in a certain like, I put my kick here, uh -huh. I put my snare here, et cetera, something like you, that? You know, I, I built off it, off my own just comfor uh, comfortability. I'm not gonna put all my other guys out there, other sauce, but I know other people who have their kick over here and might have their hi-hats over here. I know people who play almost strictly up here for their percussion. So there's different ways and I definitely encourage you to find your own way, don't, you know, copy what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, what I teach, if I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna teach you my way because it, that's the comfortable way that I can really feel comfortable in teaching. But um, I would say this is definitely the standard Mm -hmm. way is always there's always a kick the snare i know some uh a, a, another way would be the kick hi-hat snare um there's so many variations there's so many variations but that's what makes it cool i love when i see people using different ones i'm like oh you play all the way up here that's that's dope because i don't yeah <laughs> <laughs> and the way you can you know and it, the fact that you can find your groove and and still rock and play a whole different way but we're using the same thing basically it's, Dude, I'm impressed with guys like even like Sean Wasabi who have like such a large pad and they're yeah. changing it and even spinning it in the video sometimes. I'm like, how do you know where everything is? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You so, start to learn your board and you're like, yeah. You got it? Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. So it seems like there's a, I mean, dude, when I'm watching you play, man, there is a lot. I feel like, like muscle memory wise, like you got yeah. it all down, you know? So like, what are some like exercises like getting started, like different, like, I don't know if it's like patterns and stuff or uh -huh. you, we were kind of doing an exercise earlier. What are some exercises that somebody should like practice? at uh, home to kind of get start getting good at, you know, uh, basic rhythm, I guess. So basic rhythm, if you really want to learn basic rhythm, I would just recommend doing uh, basic, let's see, we can just go and just do uh, metronome on play. And actually enable it on play, there we go. So you can just do a 
keep up with the metronome, play your own thing. So the goal is pocket. There's so many variations. You can either just hang with this, or you can beat it. You know, there's so many different variations, but that 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 clock can always keep you, and you can always, you know, adjust your master clock to if this is a little fast, a little slower. That's where everything starts. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and try that. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Give it to me one more time. I gotta see it again before. I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I gotta pay closer attention now. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Dude, I, I like I like doing the. I'm, I was like, fuck, I gotta follow him. I'm like, paying close attention. Like I'm playing like, what's that like old game Simon Says or whatever the fuck. Right, Simon. Yeah, right. Uh, no, that's awesome. So um, no, I think that's a great start. So just playing with the metronome and kind of getting used to like, right. I, you were kind of playing like you were said playing with the pockets of rhythm and stuff. Right. It's funny. I think a lot of producers they already know that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. I think a lot of them already know a lot of stuff because they're drawing it in or mm -hmm. they're doing it in the. Uh, in the studio in the doll. But I think right. that what you've done is you've almost like borderline are following the similar philosophies, almost exact same, except for doing it from like you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Actual group. Right. I think, you know what's funny? I think a lot of producers actually need that in their music anyways. A little mm -hmm. bit of that offbeat, a little bit of that not perfect quantized. You oh, know what right, I'm saying? Yeah, nudge it. Yeah. No, that's sick. Um, cool. So I, I guess an, another step I want to say that I know that a lot of people are going to hiccup with, so they're playing with some basic rhythms. Right. And it sounds like you start with kick first and then kind of throw in you know, the claps and stuff and right. snares. Um, two hands is way different. Uh -huh. Like that I could follow, but then the second you start to introduce like multiple rhythms, it's almost like my brain gets confused. And I've even tried this with like, you know, drums, the same thing. So right, how do you right. start introducing like a, a second hand in for other things like hi-hats? So the, the number one thing I would say for hi-hats is uh, this is where it gets really weird. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have you try to test it out and we'll see if this works. I have this theory where if you actually don't look you know, you'll actually get it. You don't, you don't look. look. You just don't look. So thinking hurts you. That, oh, looking at this hurts you. Really? Yeah. That's super interesting. I didn't so even think we'll, about we'll that. So we'll start it off with like. So think about the beat. Don't think, don't think, uh, so I'm talking and trying to do the same yeah. time. I'm getting better at that. but. Don't think about what I'm doing. Don't think about my hands. Think about how the beat sounds. Play one more time. About, I, got, right? I got to hear it one more time. And don't don't look. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Think about the beat. All right, well, let me yeah, think right, again. Right, right, right. God, see, that's what I'm saying. But you came, but you came out strong, though. You yeah, know what I'm but, saying? But, but in my head, I'm not looking. That's what's, all right, all right, yeah. try it again. Think about the beat. Don't look at my hands. Beat. I'm gonna go one more around. Dun, dun. Oh, oh, yeah. let's go. Got, got, got a little better. Yeah, no, seriously, that, yeah, that's yeah. the trick. That's really the trick. So it's a lot of feeling. It's a lot of feeling. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, is there a couple of hi-hat patterns that are good to practice? Like that was a little slower one. I've seen you do the fucking like drill. Yeah, yeah, I mean definitely gotta work out for that, but that's that's another thing, you know, like. So what I'm doing here is I've got the two fingers and I wanna add that extra little. Uh, this hand sneaks over and hits that, it? Yeah. Dude, that's so I, like I, I heard the... that little triplet in there. I was like, wait, yeah. how do you do, I didn't even see his fingers. Ooh. Dude, that that's so fucking slick sneaking in that extra one. You know, like that that gives it that. I like to be the human quantized, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's human fucking amazing. Quantized. Yeah, I'm gonna. I feel like there's a lot of practice to get to that point, though. If you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's definitely it's definitely gonna require a little bit of practice, but you can do it two ways. You can 
two hand it like this, or you can two hand it by spacing out the pads. Mm -hmm. I did the philosophy. Same practice, though. Same yeah. type of practice, though. So, okay, cool. No, it's awesome. I think the last kind of beginner thing, at least on the on the pad and practice side, is like introducing sounds with that. Mm -hmm. Because you're up here, too. You know, yeah. this is the basic, you know, kick, right. clap, hi-hat. But like, can you now say like the next step? You know, let's say somebody has... Mm. Now, like, how do I get up there? Because that... How you get up there? I finally, yeah. yes, I can kind of, you know, get something there because you're showing me some stuff, but now there. Like, yeah. that, that's a yeah. whole nother layer that I think is interesting. So, all right, let's try this for something here. All right. So basically, I always like to call it the pinchers. That's why I call it my school of the pinchers. Mm -hmm. And this right here will always keep you in line. You're, I always make sure my loops will start on the one so you can always time up the kick. With that. Right. So. <laughs> See, now my brain's like, I forgot the first bit, but I get it though, like putting yeah. it on the kick though. So you see we can, like. Ventures, uh, start with that. <coughs> so, well, well, so I was gonna, I was gonna ask, or I'm kind of a statement, it's almost like, uh, like math, you know how math here in algebra or something, it starts off super basic, like, hey, right. here's how to, do this, and then every week the, the math teacher will lay on some crazy shit that I <laughs> yeah. would end up failing. But um, no, because you're you're building this thing in pieces, like skills wise, right? Right, right, right. Because like the you know the basics, and then oh okay, I'm seeing how that's tying in, and then starting to play a role, and then just layering on more and more. Right, right. right. No, I think that's that's fucking awesome, man. Especially, um, I mean, dude, there's so many people out there that like, dude, like bringing this to your studio or even doing it on your MIDI or like you said, an iPad, iPhone, like can bring right. so much dynamic to a producer just to like take it to the next level. Right, creativity you know? is, is huge. It's so huge. dude, I, uh, I think a lot of people is a great way to get started. Uh, what's like the one takeaway? You think somebody, somebody's watching this right now, they're, they're mm -hmm. gonna wanna get into this? Like, like what's right, one right. takeaway they need to know to get to from where they're at, probably just getting started or new uh, to getting to like honestly where you're at. Right. That's what I'm trying to do, you know? Right, okay, so no cheesy stuff, but just really have fun with it. Like have fun, don't, don't think about the technicals. As soon as you think about the technicals, it's gonna get kind of, it's, it's not gonna be as fun. So have fun with it. Um, I suggest picking up the sample packs. You know, I have one, he has one, we all have sample packs. Um, that's gonna make it real fun because you're using the sounds that we use. And, um, you know, I, I, I like to say, just play along with the loops. Um, or if you like building your own melodies, build your own melodies, but just, uh, really dive into really just that I, I just I don't really know how to put this in any other way like when I'm when I'm showing you this and when I'm playing myself I'm always smiling and it's just because I have fun so that's the main thing I would say if you're gonna if you're gonna get this thing have fun don't think about it as something that you're gonna need to go to the top and if you don't get to a certain type of level then this isn't you because it's that's not it at all it's, it's, this thing is fun. It's, as much as I'm smiling in these videos, it's, it's real. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely real. So that's the main thing I would suggest going on. Because, you know, like I said, you can go right now on your iPad and, and have just as much as fun. I can whip that out right now and show you and do some of the same stuff that I'm doing on here on a phone or on the iPad and still have that same joy. And I guarantee you I'd still get the same placements and same everything just because, you know, you feel that energy. So... Yeah. No, that's Fun awesome. It, man. Sweet. All right, man. Dude, that was fucking awesome, dude. Hey. A lot of people are going to like this. Thanks hey. for coming on. Hey. Yeah. It's a wrap.